you mean he sold out? Diva, he didn't sell out. What you talking about? They took a chance on him. He took that them. Who is the one who did the most for who? What you talking about, Diva? I'm telling you, you don't know what you're saying, ma'am, because I... I know sports, and I know that these people didn't want to pay him. What you talking about? He sold out. He can only do so much. Where he's supposed to be your messiah or something? Y'all asking too much of this man. Did Deion Sanders sell out? We're going to talk about that today in this session with this hot, hot, hot topic. I'm yours truly, Diva Laree, for the UNA University and UNA Republic. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah! Gentlemen, yeah, gotta do my dance. Yeah, <laughs> my hand don't move. All right, welcome everybody. Rory, Margaret, I'm yours truly, James. Yours truly, Deep Lurie, bold and beautiful, Jay. Welcome, welcome. We're going to get into this thing today. Hot topic, hot, hot, hot topic. All right, let's get into this thing. I want to welcome everybody. Welcome, everybody. I came in early because I wanted to have a few minutes before my class to get on this topic about did Dion sell out? All right. Now, uh, we did uh, a session a couple of days ago. As a matter of fact, the last session I did, it was uh, it was a show about stop selling out for money. Now. In that, I did mention Deion Sanders, and then we put a clip up, and I, the, the thing was, I think it said, uh, stop selling out for money. All right, that was the topic of it. And a lot of people took issue with it, and several things in that clip. And so I wanted to address those. Now, this is one of the, this is the first time I've ever done this type of session, because I don't tend to respond to uh, these you know, these worldly things, I just don't respond to them because I don't get caught up in that. Uh, but I must say that I have been following this story with Dion uh, for quite some time. And so I did make a, a statement and I, the, really the whole topic of the session that I did was about selling out for money and how we're giving up our assets. This is not about Dion uh, selling out or being a sellout or anything like that. It's more about us learning to use a different currency. All right. However, because I mentioned Dion, which is a hot topic, a hot topic, uh, we had a lot of comments. And so I wanted to come on here and address them. And I did invite everybody uh, to be a part of this. So what I'm going to do, Bayo, Bayo, uh, welcome, Sunset. Uh, and CN Hicks, welcome. Uh, I'm going to uh, speak on this whole situation. And then we're going to take uh, some comments. If anybody wants to come in, we'd love to have you. And I'm going to go over some of the comments that were in the comment section. But before we get started, I want y'all to know I love you. And I want y'all to know I'm a fan of Deion Sanders and a fan of JSU now because of Deion Sanders. And what we want to do is be able to, even if you don't want to agree to disagree. Diva, I don't agree to disagree because I disagree with trying to agree with your whole agreement. I disagree. That's fine. 
this that's fine. But what we're going to do is respect and love each other, regardless of whether we disagree or not. I love you. All right. So we're just going to have this conversation. And to be honest with you, I think it's great that we're all in an uproar. This is energy now that we can use. It's great. And so if my words offended somebody, you know, my my desire is not to offend you or or him or anybody else. Uh, But we're going to go through this and we're going to keep it real. Now, there are things that I won't be able to talk about here. Uh, Some things that I know, but what we do want to do is keep it real with respect to what happened. We want to see both sides. We're going to look at both sides. All right. And then I'm going to give you once again, my perspective on this Dion situation, even though what I speak on dealing with not selling out for money, it deals with something much greater than the Dion situation. All right. Uh, that situation with Dion just happens to be a part of the topic now. So let me go on this. The, the session that I did, and you all can go back and find it, and it's called Stop Selling Out for Money. And what the whole issue is, is that um, there is a group that looks to control all of the resources. Now, some of you all are aware of this, and some of you all, if you're not, go do some research, all right? Uh, and, and the thing is, there's this group and, and they want to own and maintain everything. This is not about black and white, because when you look at your uh, Albions, who are so-called, y'all call white, which they're not, and your melanated people, which y'all call yourself black, which you're not, um, there is, it, you are, those are puppets. Everybody are puppets to this one group that wants to control everything. And the problem is that we have to learn how to not be so hooked on this drug called money or this drug called Federal Reserve notes, all right? We've got to learn uh, to, how do we say, value our assets, all right? We've got to learn how to create our own currency. That's where we are because at this time, um, when you talk about uh Albions or melanated people, there's really no resource for you. Now, yeah, your Albions get more access to the resources. But when I talk about this, look, when we were that that whole thing with Martin Luther King and this uh, boycott, boycott the buses and all that. At that time, there were a lot of melanated businesses. There was bus companies. And even before then, we had all kind of assets. Do you all remember BET? All right, BET is no longer run by bees or melanated people. No, it's run by uh, one of those groups that's wanting to control everything. And the problem is that we keep selling it out. In that session, if you all go and view the entire session, I spoke about the original people and how they sold out the land. And then they were frustrated because, hey, these people are in the land. Yeah, they gave us a payment, but that payment was not worth the land that we gave them, that they still are accessing, that they are still creating funds from. All right. I talked to, I talked about different assets that these people are coming after that we have, and we keep selling them out for Federal Reserve notes when the Federal Reserve notes don't even hold any close of a value to the assets that we're giving up. That's what I'm talking about. So uh, now let's get on Mr. Dion Sanders. And uh, we're going to get into these comments that y'all left in in the uh, comment section. I love y'all. I would say this, um, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm careful about, you know, the words that I speak and the things that I say, because um, it's not my desire to upset you, you all, because y'all some powerful people and uh, I love you. And I want to make sure that we build together and not be in cl- conflict with each other. However, when I speak, I keep things 100 and I call them what they are. OK, and so this is not to diss anybody. And, and this is a hot topic. It doesn't matter what side I'm on. I could be on, Dion's great. I'm going to have somebody in the box. No, he ain't. He ain't great. He'll sell out. Okay. <laughs> so it doesn't matter which way I go. 
<laughs> we are so uh, divided, if you will, on this particular topic. However, we can do all of this in love. And that's what we're going to do today. But we're also going to keep it 100. All right. So now I want to go into this because I did have a comment in the in the uh, in the in the box and it said something about what well, you don't you don't know nothing about this you need to keep you need to keep your uh your ideas and your comments on things you know about all right let me let me speak on this so i used to produce a television show a sports television show uh take two sports from a woman's perspective and we covered all of the major sports nfl nba uh nhl major league baseball and we, I would go to those games. And yes, I knew football. Football was my favorite. That was my favorite sport. And so it didn't matter what level, whether it was on uh, 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 the college level, the, uh, the professional level, or the elementary and the high school, I, I, we went to all of them. And so when it comes to sports and it comes to knowledge of sports, I know this. Not only that, but I've been, you know, when Dion came to Atlanta, I was with him. That was a fan from there. And when he left, I was happy he left. When he left Atlanta, why? Because there was not an atmosphere for winning in Atlanta. Okay, I get it. He, he wanted to go win, and that's what he did. And he went to uh, San, Fran San Francisco. Then he left there. He got a ring, left there, and went to Dallas. He got a ring. So I'm saying to you, um, I'm all for people finding their happiness. And when it comes to sports, oh, I know sports. All right. I know sports. So, you know, let's, I want to just make sure I clear that up. Uh, yeah, I know. Now, on the other side, I want to, I want to go into, uh, the both, both sides of this game, what's going on with Dion, because these are some things that, uh, I've learned. I've watched this whole, uh, situation play and I want to go on both sides. Now I've talked about how, yeah, he let go of this situation uh, whereby he had a lot of power. Didn't have a lot of money, but he had a lot of power. And my whole thing is when we learn how to turn power into money, then we're going to really see ourselves come up. All right. So that's just a, that's an ideal looking on from the outside looking in. All right. Just the idea that we learn how to turn power into money or resources that we need. Even if it's not money, it's like, hey, uh, I don't have the money, but I can get you a plane. I don't have the money, but I can get you some land. I don't have the money, but I can get you some people who come and build what you need. That is when we really start to see our power. All right. That's what my whole session was about. Uh, some people took issue with uh, what you mean he uh, took a chance or they took a chance on him. He took a chance on them. Let me address this real quick. I, you know, I'm gonna address it later. Cause I already got it in my comments. I'm gonna show some of the comments. Now, uh, I want to get into this other side. When Dion left the president of the college, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the president of the college, uh, is quoted saying, I hope he fails. I'm going to say that was very, that was a very disappointing statement. It was disappointing to hear somebody say that, okay, much less the president of the college to say that. Now, let's understand what kind of energies come from that kind of statement. When I hear this, it lets me know, first of all, this is someone who is not in control of their emotions. Number two, can't be riding on a very high vibratory frequency. And number three, doesn't sound to be the most professional person that you would want to be dealing with in business. So when we look at the other side, you know, even though, yes, ideally it would be great for him to take this power he had and turn it into funds. Because you can't tell me when you have that kind of power that you can't turn it into funds. All right. Now, <clears throat> when I hear this and when I heard this, it gave me an understanding of what Dion was likely dealing with in the background that we couldn't see. All right. 
when we talk about what's done in the dark will come to the light. When I heard that comment, it shed light on the mentality of the people who he's working with. So I didn't just hear. So when I hear things and I see things, I don't just hear, oh, that thing. I'm looking at the energy behind it. I'm looking at where it came from. I'm looking at <clears throat> what place it came from. And when I heard that, it was indicative of what energies were going on behind the scene. So, yeah, again, I'm, I'm looking at both sides. All right. When I did that session, it was specifically about let's learn to hold on to our assets and create wealth from our power. But looking at the other side, behind the scenes, it might not have been as easy to do that dealing with the people who he had to go through in order to do do certain things. Now, for those who don't know, I want to get into this real quick and let's understand uh, what happened because there might be people watching this. You know, it might be two or three people who came, who be living under the rock like me, who might not understand what's going on with this situation. So, um, Deion Sanders, uh, a former NFL player, he... Uh, is in the NFL Hall of Fame. He's in the College Hall of Fame. Uh, he's a cornerback, uh, just a very great player. And for me, I watched him, you know, as, as he moved through his ranks and did what he wanted to do in NFL. Uh, so he left when he finally retired. He started coaching his children or his sons um, in football, and then he ended up uh, opening up an academy. And it was called Prime Academy. Some things went down with that. Uh, he came, he was looking for a spot. He wa he wanted to go on with some of these larger schools, but they wouldn't bring him in as a head coach. They only wanted him as, you know, you could be an assistant to somebody or you can come in under these people. And Deion Sanders was saying, no, nope, I want to be the head coach. Uh, so... A lot. I need y'all to understand when I say they took a chance. Yes, they they took a chance because there was certain several things. First of all, they did, there was no knowledge that he had the credentials to come in and do the job. Secondly, there was there was a, a stain with respect to his reputation that was going on, and so yeah, that was a, a big deal. Yeah, they took a chance because they didn't know what was going to happen with this guy. And you got to remember when there's a stain on somebody's record, then that, and you hired them, they become a part of your organization. Well, you inherit that stain. All right. So yeah, they took a chance. All right. So let's, let's just make, again, we're just being 100. Let's be clear on this. It's not to say, oh, he did more and he was this. And by the way, leave your comments in the, uh, uh, the comment section. I'll be glad to get to them. Uh, use, user 341 says, what was the stain? I, you know, I don't want to go into that negative stuff, but something happened with the Prime Academy, all right? And, and I don't think it, he had anything to do with it. There was some kind of deals with the money and they were the, the people who were running it because uh, Dion only lent his name to the situation and he was to come in and coach but the academic side was lacking and there were things going on on that side that were not supposed to be going on and Dion evidently got into it with the guy and but bottom line that was the whole issue it was like oh well, you know about that prime academy so it's not necessarily that uh you know the whole everybody was that way but for the whole, the college league, that's why they wouldn't let him in when he wanted to go to jobs with these higher schools, these PWI schools, as they call them. All right. They wouldn't let him in. But then Jackson State said, well, come on in and run our program. All right. So De Deion Sanders goes in here into this um, Jackson State, which was really they had a really bad team. All right, and he worked miracles. They didn't have a practice football field. They didn't have a decent facilities. Uh, you know, he comes in and he, again, brings in his facilities. He changed the mindset of the players, of the school, of the people watching who felt that he couldn't do it. He, he, he worked miracles. That's what I said. 
So go watch the whole video and stop knee jerking on a little piece of what you saw. He did miracles, things that nobody thought he could do. He brings in uh, all of this publicity, all of this attention. ESPN wasn't paying uh, these HBCUs any attention. Now everybody wants to uh, jump on the bandwagon, and that's fine. That's what he brought. He brought a swagger. He made people believe. He gave them hope. And so you, you know, you have to respect him. As a matter of fact, I want to say at this time, I want to take the, the time to say thank you, Coach Sanders. See, look, I am not, I never went to uh, an HBCU, never had a desire, never didn't watch college football. I didn't know anything about Jackson State except that band. That band is awesome. I knew the band. But I didn't really know anything about their team. And, but he brought, he made me, he, he inspired me. He made me want to get up and do some other stuff. He inspired me to, to, and helped me to also recognize how powerful people are when you just make them believe. Yeah. He, he made me want to, you know, get back on my organization grind. Cause I, when I left uh, North America, I was like, I, I don't want to own another business because dealing with people is not the easiest thing, but here's coach prime. You know, He's building this team. He inspired me. Just, you know, just somebody in the community. So, uh, so it's, it's really, he brought a lot. Thank you, Coach Prime. He, even him leaving brought a lot. Why? Because what it does now is it makes people recognize, okay, we better get on our game. Now, now there's saying well we better get on our game because we could have done more we could have been more to him all right and so let me go into it now now that we're understanding who he is and what he brought uh again also you you got to recognize he brought the attention of the nfl now the nfl is paying attention to what coach prime is doing all right he's making them visit and calling them out if they don't visit you know, and come and pay his guys attention. So he, he brought a lot. Thank you, Coach Brian. And we should be grateful even in our, uh, you know, being upset or disappointed. We should still be grateful because he brought a lot. Nobody is saying he didn't. Now, I want to talk about this because um, there were certain things that Dion complained about while he was at uh, Jackson State. Okay. One was the water issue. Two was the crime. Because I remember him saying, as a matter of fact, the water issue, going back to that, he was in the swimming pool bathing. That's got to be frustrating. He, you know, I remember him being, he did a session where he was speaking to the mayor and the governor. He was like, listen, can y'all come together and you know, overcome your issues because we got to deal with this water problem. It's got to be frustrating not to have water. Then the crime. Okay. And I remember him once again, calling for there to be a halt on crime. Now I got some, some reports showing that the people listen, can y'all please stop killing each other? Why does somebody have to come and say that? But he did, and he was able to make people listen. All right? The other thing he, he complained about, he, you know, he had to jump through hoops to get things done. He wants the, the field cut. So, that's, can somebody please come cut the grass? They don't cut the grass, so he's got to go and get his lawnmower to cut the grass. All right? Um, lack of uh, opportunity for bowl games. He talked about. Look, I just want to have a bowl game at this time. Why do I have to go and, you know, meet with this one and get this one done and take care of that just to have a bowl game? You know, he's putting out all of these ideas and everything he's doing is getting knocked down. All right. We're talking about uh, the facilities and the amenities that he had to overcome. Uh, let me say this one. This one is big. Uh, this was one where, you know, they were talking about Shador. 
being in the conversation about Heisman, the Heisman Trophy. Now, if he was at any other school and he had the same record that he had in uh, Jackson, he would be definitely in the conversation for the Heisman Trophy. But because he's at Jackson, he can't be in that conversation. And I can now, you got to understand, it's one thing, all those other things. But when it starts talking about your child and how your child can achieve something simply because of where he is, then that's going to be an incentive to step out of that position. That's even more of a of an incentive to step out of the position. He likes the Heisman Trophy. Now, that's one of their trophies. You know, and again, I say we're going to learn how to create our own, you know, ideas or trophies, if you will, that we we cherish them in our own community. But he wants the Heisman and his son can't get that at Jackson. So the opportunity comes up for him to put him his son in that place. Well, I, you know, you can't knock that. You can't be upset about that. All right. Now. In honorable mentions, he got a lot of hate, hate eration from the other coaches. <laughs> you know, it was a lack of organization with respect to uh, the coaches and them being able to come together. All right. For them to almost come together and uh, create something. He, he got a lot of, you know, he got a lot of uh, pushback on that. And come to find out when we look at, you know, what's going on behind the scenes, you know, the whole thing is about, oh, um, ESPN is not broadcasting us on their station. When every, down there, every student in the school got a, uh, got a uh, YouTube, a YouTube channel, why are they not creating their own YouTube channel and broadcasting this themselves? Again, I'm going to get into this, but now we're talking about mindset and what Deion Sanders had to deal with, with respect to being at the school. So, you know, again, ideally, let's turn our power into funds. However, on the back end, there were entities making it difficult for him to move to that level. And so I'm going to say this. So he leaves. And I have to respect someone who's willing to walk away from something to find their happiness. I can't tell you how many times we've seen women who are uh, stay in a bad relationship where they're getting abused and they refuse to leave uh, because, oh, it's for the. Okay. I got some. I should have told you the name so you can hit them up. Um, but yeah, we. They refuse to leave for whatever reason, and they're staying in a situation where they're not happy. All right? So I commend him for leaving, but I knew he would. <laughs> because even though when he left, and let me be honest about this, when he left, um, I was sad. I was sad for the students that came. I was sad for... Uh, whatever this movement that he has started to create, but he has already shown in his this this is part of how he operates. He's not going to stay anywhere for too long if he's not getting what he wants, and that's okay. All right, when he's already shown that he if he's not liking where he is, he's going to move, and that's fine. So nobody's knocking him for that. I want to make that clear. Nobody is knocking him. Uh, for doing what he felt he needed to do for his own happiness. You got to respect that. Not only that, you know, you have a lot of people that are saying, uh, you know, well, he could have done this. And he, if he wanted to stay, he would have found a way to stay, period. He didn't want to stay because he clearly wasn't happy there. And when we look at what has come out after he left, I can understand to some degree why he wasn't happy. I just read down a whole list of these things that we heard him complain about while he was there. All right. Now, 
Uh, I want to point this out because I was watching the president of Colorado. <laughs> uh, the president of Colorado, they were talking about, yeah, we got, we got Deion Sanders. We, he sold out his contract and we bought him out and blah, blah, blah. And he says, okay, but we don't have all the money yet. Wait a minute, what? What you mean you don't have all the money yet? <laughs> so the deal is this. Um, they're going to, you know, they're still pulling the money, the funds together to pay Dion. And again, I'm saying to you, the funds could have been pulled together just as well on the, you know, Jackson State side as they could have been pulled together on the Colorado side. He, they don't have all the money yet. They just promised the money. Like, oh, we're going we're gonna to figure it out. We could do the same thing when we know how to turn our power into wealth. All right. But um, I can't personally say what went on specifically behind the scenes. But I can tell you that there are things that are indicative that he was being fought behind the scenes. And so when you get to that point, there's only so much you can do. You have to move on. I'm going to tell you some, something else that makes it indicative that he was being fought behind the scenes. Now, yes, once again, Jackson State did take a chance on Dion. Yes. And yes, Dion came in and brought a whole lot of uh, advantage. A whole lot of resources, a whole lot of attention. He brought a lot. And he left behind a lot. He left Jackson State in a better position. All right. Um, but what, what I saw when he went to Colorado, he was very grateful. Thank you so much for, you know, giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much for taking a chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't get that he had that same love for the opportunity he had been given at Jackson State. I didn't get that. Whether he should or not, I'm just letting you know I didn't get that. And, and that's the sad part. But that's indicative of the relationship between him and the president or the staff at JSU. And the whole thing is, let's, let's ask this question. Because it was, they couldn't pay him. And then somebody else said, no, they wouldn't pay him. I'm going to say to you, all of this deals with mindset. Everything deals with mindset. Because the deal is they could pay him. They could. You get your mind in the right place. It's not about you being broke. It's not about, oh, I don't have the money. But again, if your mind is in the right place, you're going to turn your power into wealth. And I'm saying to you, the same way these people at Colorado are saying, well, we don't have it yet, but we're going to get it. The same way they could have said to Jackson, we're going to get it. We're going to keep him. And we're going to find a way to turn our power into wealth. You're telling me he's bringing in $30 million to the city that y'all have calculated. Find a way. All right. They doing it at Colorado. They don't have it, but they're going to find a way. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going back to the statement that I made where people took issue with it, uh, where I said Deion Sanders sold out. Was I saying that he was a sellout? Let me say it like this. Yeah, he sold out. I don't retract that. Yes, he sold out. I'm not saying that he should not have or he should have. I'm not saying this was a good move or a bad move. I'm saying it was a sad move for sure. But yes, he sold out. And yes, he was deceptive to people. All right. And that was hurtful to people. And I'm going to tell you some groups because the whole thing was like, well, who hurt? Because this grown man decided he wanted to do this. OK, let's understand something, peoples. All right. Do I feel that that is a part of his nature to be deceptive and that he is a sellout? No, I didn't say that. I said he sold out. Now, the difference, what's the difference? Okay, somebody gets drunk. It's like, oh, you was drunk. You, you couldn't even make it out the door. You couldn't even stand up and walk out the door. You was drunk. But do, does that mean they were an alcoholic? No, I didn't say that. That's not even a part of their character. They just, in that particular time, 
they had their own issue. They did this. Yes, in this particular time, yeah, he sold out. Colorado even said it. Well, we sold. He sold us. We sold out his contract. Or he sold his contract. We bought it out. All right. Now I'm going to say this to you. Yeah, he was deceptive. And I, I can clearly see that it was emotionally draining on him to deceive people. All right. Y'all remember that session that that uh, one he did where he had the gray beard, his whole beard was gray. And, uh, you know, you could tell his demeanor had changed. He was he was down. He this was weighing heavy on him. I don't think that is in his uh, demeanor or in his character to be deceptive, but he was. And so don't we're going to call it. We're going to call it what it is. All right. So who hurt? Who was hurt by this diva? OK, let's let me let me listen. Here's the other thing before I go into this. When. When he was answering those questions, he was asking them the question, well, you are you going to Colorado? Or are you going to move? To Colorado? He was dancing. He might not be able to physically dance because of his foot. But doggone it. He was dancing like rerun on what's happening. When they was asking him those questions, he was like, oh, well, see, I tell you what we're going to do. Those kids are smart. I'm telling you, them, them kids are smart and intelligent. They're they going to be able to go past this. He was dancing. He didn't answer the question. And he was upset. That's, he, he had lost his whole composure. That right there told me he's going through it. Right there, when I could see that, I didn't know at the time that he had already accepted the job. No, I didn't know. But something was up. Why is he so upset? Why is he looking like what he's looking? He ain't looking like prime looks and likes to look. He takes pride. That whole look good, you feel good, you feel good, you play good. You... That wasn't him. In those conferences, in those meetings, he clearly didn't feel good. And no, he didn't look good. He looked like he was down. I don't think it's in his nature to enjoy deceiving people. And who did he deceive? Okay, let's talk about this. Under Armour. Y'all put it in the comment section. Uh, and let me know if I'm, if I'm incorrect. But Under Armour comes in probably after the third, the, the uh, two games to the last se uh, of the season. So maybe they had about two games left in the season. Under Armour comes in with the uh, thought of, okay, we're going to... Uh, do a donation of a million dollars and we're going to upgrade uh, Shadour's uh, uniform. That's, that's what they came in for. They are uh, coming in to back. Thank you, Tony, for the gift. He's got Nike up here. This is on the armor. And I don't Think they're coming out of that contract with Nike. No, he, he deceived somebody on that. Call it what it is. Who else did he deceive? Let's talk about these kids that came in through the portal who are now stuck. They can't trans and just not recognize where the energy comes from for that thing I'm watching. Somebody was giving him a hard time behind the scenes and he was going through it in his own head about wait. I sold these people a dream. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And when you bring in God into it and when you start talking about religion, yeah, you sold them a dream. Thank you, Ife Tayo and Hair Health Herbalist, a specialist. You sold them a dream. And so when they are disappointed that you leave, you got to, you know, you, you know, you're going to disappoint some people. So here you got these kids coming through this portal because he said, I'm going to be here at this HBCU and I'm going to make sure you, you get to the uh, NFL that you're going to see the media. You're going to see the attention. You're going to get the scouts. That's like coming in and the bird that you're riding loses its wings in mid flight. It can't fly no more. You, you deceive some people. Because they can't leave. They got to stay there. And I hope they stay there. And I hope they, you know, they play. Like they out of their mind. Who else? Shiloh. His son. His son had bought into JSU. The whole, <laughs> what he sold to people. Everything he sold to people about, hey, you come here, you get the atmosphere, you get the people, you get the... 
He sold that. Shiloh bought it. Him, <laughs> Shiloh went and bought a, a, a drum major, what they call it, spear, a staff. And he's learning the routines and he's become part of the, the, the drum major squad now. He's the, the sixth one. And I told you I love that man. I always watched him. Shiloh bought into it. His own son. He talked about Shiloh in his uh, press conference. He says, yeah, my, my other son. No, he said, he didn't say my other son. He said, <laughs> he said, this is your quarterback talking about Shadur. And he's like, I ain't, I ain't bringing the other one. His, his brother, I didn't bring him because he, he, he pissed me off. I, I didn't bring him up here. So, listen, he, <laughs> Shiloh is another one who's disappointed in this thing. Not to mention the people, once again, who bought into it, who believed in this dream where he said, we're going to uh, make this, uh, the, the playing fields level. And let me say this, if anybody could have done it, it would have been uh, Deion Sanders. But let me say this also. Did he level the playing fields? He might not have leveled the playing fields, but he sure as heck showed these people how to level the playing field. He showed them how to do it. He had success, and success, as they say, leaves clues. And so here we are um, at this point where he's left. Now, let me say this before I get in on this. Um, this is what I did not like. Again, um, it seemed as though he were almost dissing Jackson State. And I'm going to say that this is like, again, I, I've mentioned this before. It's like you have a relationship, all right, where a man is with his melanated woman who took a chance on him and helped him get on his feet and, and uh, get the success. And he's dressed nice. He's looking nice. All these other women start coming. And then he leaves his melanated sister for an Albion woman who is damn near at the bottom of the barrel. And then he talks trash about the sister. So it, that's, what it's, that's kind of what it's like. That's what it looks like to certain people. Not to say that that was his mindset, but when he gets there, this whole thing about, oh, you know, the air is clean and the, you know, the, there's no crime and there's no crime and there's no crime. I heard that was a, that was a constant, you know, statement throughout the, the, the sessions, no crime, no crime. And yeah, there's crime. And I understand, I understand wanting to get away with that, from that rather. I don't blame him. I don't. But again, one of the things he brought to the table is the people listen to him. And anytime you got a situation where there's a lot of crime, you've got a situation where there are people who hate themselves, period, period. And why was this so sad? Because people look up to Deion Sanders and the main people who are doing these things are young people, young people who have been looking up to these rappers who are rapping about uh, bees, calling women bees and calling each other N words. Here's Deion Sanders who doesn't curse, who's got this hip hop song now. I wake up motivated. I wake up motivated. I try to help somebody, bless somebody, please somebody, make somebody be better for themselves. All of this thing, this is sad because they kind of lost that. And the other thing is that, you know, our young people, they look to materialistic things to, to gratify or seem as though they are better. You know what I'm saying? They look for materialistic things. I'm not mad about that. But what he did was to a certain degree, you know, he left a situation where these people needed that. They needed that help. They needed somebody to look up to who could say, uh, you know, stop the violence or, or, you know, let's have peace. And so that was very important in that community. And that's why it was sad. Again, I'm not saying that he needed to stay there. I'm not saying he should have stayed there for the rest of his life. No, nope. I'm not saying that that's not even in his character or his nature. Anyway, he moves on when he's ready. 
and I'm going to say this too, because I, you know, I'm telling you, I've, people have been coming at me and I had people coming at me because they said like, they were like, uh, and it didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter which way it went. Like I said, th there's so it's, there's, um, people are polar opposites on this. What I'm happy about is that people are, uh, on the positive side. I'm happy that people are defending Deion Sanders choice. I'm happy about that. All right. But at the same time, what we do need to have is compassion for those people who are hurting. They are hurting. And rightfully so. He, you know, a lot of people are hurt on a, a, a quite a few different levels. I'm going to say this. I saw this session with uh, some of the students at JSU who were uh, being interviewed. And for the most part, they were like, Dion. Oh, it's my, oh, the coach. Yeah, I need to know who it was. Because, see, most of us uh, people who grew up or watching him or what have you or watched him as he went along his way most of us uh we know who we, he is and we have more of a vested interest in him also as um, older adults we have seen how important it is to have a good role model because the main thing people are uh complaining about is not having a quote-unquote black leader Deion sanders is not necessarily a black leader but he turned into one when he was at jackson state the things he did in two years 2.25 years amazing amazing all right so i just my my whole point is this i see both sides and we need to deal with both sides yes he has the right to go off and do what he needs to do. Nobody should have been expecting him to do all of these things. The onus is on melanated people as a whole, not just him by himself. He turned into a leader that he really clearly didn't want to be. I get it. And so not, not only that, there were, how do you say, energies behind the scene that were causing him frustration causing him not to be able to achieve the levels that he wanted to achieve. I, I understand that. I get that. I respect that. Let's see. While I agree with your rationality, you must include that she's rich. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Barry says, uh, he left for the Albion woman that was at the bottom of the barrel, but she's rich. Yeah, she's rich. She's rich. But she's really not rich, though, Barry. She's got good credit is what she's got, okay? Because she doesn't really have all the money right now, but she got good credit. <laughs> so she's going to get him the money, okay? Thank you, Barry. Uh, let's see. As a person who went to an HBCU, I know how disappointed those guys were. Thank you, Sunset Beach. Um... Hair Health Herbalist says she just became one of the top two viewers. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Uh, okay, so now, let me say this. Uh, getting into this, I can't wait for the movie. I, I want to see... I want to see the drama. Because, you know, these documentaries... While we see part of it, I don't know if they telling the full story because I want I hope this documentary shows what happened between Dion and Shiloh. I want to know how the, the siblings took it. I want to know how what they had to go through to keep this thing a secret. I want to know the relationship between Dion and the actual staff and the president. I want to know what the relationship was. I want to see. I know it was Rocky. Well, I can't wait for the movie. I mean, these documentaries are great. But what? really have. I want to see the drama. All right. Um, I want to say this and then I'm going to go into, if I have somebody who wants to come on and have this discussion, Barry, if you want to come on, let me know. Uh, but I want to, I want to talk about, um, you know, was this just a game? Was this just a game? Was this just business? I'm going to suggest to you that it wasn't, it's never just a game. And, um, I, I'm going to tell you this. I told you I used to uh, produce a television show and we would go out to these, uh, the, the NFL games and all, all the games. But I was at a. And this guy says uh, uh, this uh, couple, uh, 
Random. Random. I forget your name. Hit up Random. See if Random wants to come on in in a, in a few minutes. But um, I was interviewing this couple, and they say to me, "You know, football saved our marriage. Football saved our marriage." And I was like. Really? And I'm doing this interview and they say, yeah, because, you know, we were constantly fighting. We really weren't spending a whole lot of time together. But when we started enjoying the game of football and we started becoming active in our tailgating and all of this, uh, then it saved our marriage. We started becoming friends. We found a common ground, something that we can share and and move forward together in. And root for together. So it's never just a game. As a matter of fact, as a business owner, if I want to see how someone is going to be in business, I take them out on the field. I just do this. I just do this. We go play football. Yeah, I play football. And I want to see how they act when things aren't going well. How they act. Because that's when you really know who somebody is. How how do they act when things aren't going well? I know this is a person who I need to have on my team. Or how did they act and, and what was their energy at this time? That's when I know. So it's never just a game. You're going to learn things about people in every walk or aspect of life. I want to say thank you, Barry, for the roses. All right. And so... Like I said, you know, when Dion came to Atlanta, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Dion. So don't get it that I'm uh, twisted and I'm trying to hate on him or at all uh, that I feel like he should have stayed. No, I'm, I'm not saying that. If he left and it makes him happy, with it clearly does, then I'm happy for him. I want people to find their happiness. But at the same time, my message is the same. Let's make sure we uh, find the power in our assets, uh, find the value of assets and they get create money from that, uh, cultivate our money. Um, so getting back to this, Deion Sanders became like a father figure to these kids, to the ones in the football team, uh, especially. All right, he revered in that community. And should all of the onus about bringing change be about him and what he does? No. No, I do not agree with that. It should not all be on him. All right. I say again, he was likely getting pushed back, especially in the face of the comments made by the president and from the comments made by uh, Coach Neely. I love Coach Neely, by the way. I'm a fan of Coach Neely. Uh, now, here's my question, peoples. Here's the question. How do we move forward? All right. This is a great thing. What happened with Dion? It was probably better that he left than it was that he stayed. It's probably better now because now it's like, okay, we got to get our act together. All right. If we want, you know, some kind of uh, salvage, we got to save ourselves. We can't wait for somebody and expect somebody, one person to do it all for, for us. Uh, Y'all got all kind of power in your YouTube. All of us do. We have a voice now. We don't have to wait for the media to put it out for us. All right. And again, I totally love those of you all who are standing up for Dion. Great. But please have compassion for those who are hurting. No, they shouldn't be spitting out their mouth talking about, oh, I hope he fails. You, let me say something to you. Uh, the minute you come out of your face with a negative against somebody, then you must live that same negative. You, you've got to live that. So that shouldn't have been said and that should not be said. But how do we, you know, have compassion for the ones who are hurting? All right. So what are you going to do for yourself? He's gone. How do we move forward? How do we show gratitude for what he did bring? Because can't none of those people who are angry at him say he didn't bring a lot to that school, not one of them, not even the one who said he hopes he fails. As a matter of fact, it's a thin line between love and hate. All right. He, he, this president of uh, Jackson, he is the melanated woman who is upset about him leaving. All right. What has to happen is that we show gratitude and appreciation for what he brought and then 
pick up off of the clues that he left. All right. Pick up off the clues that he left. All right. Now, in closing, I'm going to close it out because I want to uh, get to some of the comments. And then if somebody wants to come on, I want you all to uh, hit me up so I can bring you on. Um, I think it's been a painful but a great lesson for the community in a whole. All right. Um, it's helped people to see that they have power. That's what that's what Dion brought. Uh, he brought a, another vision where it's like, wait a minute, we can do this because if Dion can do it, then we can do it. No, nobody, you know, they don't have the swagger like what he has. But there are some things collectively that we can do to bring about this change that we're looking for collectively. And so he helped to pinpoint and shine a light on some of those things that need to be cleared up. Hey, your mayor and your governor, y'all need to work together to clear this up. I don't even understand how, you know, you can't have water on campus. $10,000 and a drilled hole gets you water on campus. I know this because who doesn't know landscaping? All right. Um, I, I hope our melanated people stop looking for a black, black leader. All right. And start learning how to step up for ourselves. So now what's happened is a whole bunch of conversations have opened up about how we do this. How we, how we do this. The other thing that Dion Sanders left behind is that uh, now this is a hot job at Jackson State. This is a hot job. Everybody wants to be there now. Or, or they have the ability, rather, to attract a hot talent. Good. And this is going to spawn people to level up in their business. Not just at JSU and you know other people who are uh, a part of it, but even uh, the, the uh, businesses around that community. You're going to have to level up. Now, the other thing that I've, a comment that I've heard is he can help more melanated people. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He can help more uh, melanated people in the position where he is. Yes, he can. And he's, he's going to get the opportunity to do that. And hope, hopefully he'll be able to capitalize, capitalize off of that. I hope he does. All right. Now, let me get into these comments. Comments, peoples. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see. How do we do this? I'm getting good at this. Told you I'm a newbie, but I'm getting good. All right. Now, first comment. Let's see if I can get it pulled up here. All right. My first comment. All right. I don't know if I can see that. Let me see. I might not be able to see my comments. All right. Which one is this? Give me a second. I'm going to find it. There we go. All right. So this first one says, uh, this is from a, a person. They said, uh, took a chance on him. Really? He took a chance on, he took a chance on them. Why don't the ones that are mad look at the results? <laughs> and so I marked out his name. But listen. They took a chance on each other. Let's keep it clear. They took a chance on each other. But yes, uh, Jackson State did take a chance on him for several reasons. But it was a good uh, thing, that what they did, and they, it paid off. All right? Now, this other gentleman says, uh, he says, not true, ma'am. I totally disagree with this respectfully. And that's why I love y'all. I love you for being so respectful. Like I said, we can disagree. But we're going to be respectful and loving to each other as we do it. All right. So now the next comment is, let's see. All right. Who is this? Let me see. Um, this one, I'm dealing with the mindset. All right. And I'm going to tell you why I'm dealing with the mindset. Uh, the the deal was my question is if JSU wanted to keep him uh, that bad, how they didn't make a counter offer. So I agree with this. And again, 
That's why I put right here mindset. Uh, the problem, the thing that Deion Sanders brought to the table is a change in mindset. When you believe, and, and for us, we like to know. But when you start to believe that you can do something, doors open up for it to be done. All right. And that's simply changing your mindset. He had a different mindset. His mindset said is I can do anything that I need to do. Whereas the people where he came, this atmosphere, remember, remember, they wouldn't even go after uh, four star and five star recruits before Dion came. They wouldn't go after them. They wouldn't even think about it. Because in their mind, they couldn't afford it. In their mind, these people wouldn't want them. In their mind, it wasn't possible. That's why they didn't offer him a counter offer. Because their mindset is, oh, we, we can't compete. We can't get the money. We're not going to be able to do it. Whereas over here at Colorado, they don't even have the money yet. <laughs> they don't even have the money. But they believe. They believe. So if nothing else, Deion Sanders showed us we got to start believing. Because when you believe a whole nother, and I talk about this in our sessions in the universe, when you start believing in things, a whole other plane of dimensions open up, dimensions open up. You can't have access to those dimensions if you don't have the belief, if you don't have the mindset to tap into it. And so what I hope is happening with all of the HBCUs and all of melanated people is that, and, and, and people period, people period, is that when you open up your mind and you start believing a whole other realm of universes and possibilities opens up to you because of your change in your mindset. All right. Uh, the next comment. Next comment was, and I only just took a few because, of course, I can't go through all of these. Um, the next comment is. All right. The question was, all the people mad wanted him to be the great black hope or something, how long, how long did they really think he would be there? Now, once again, I already told you all, um, I had been talking about how it's not in Dion's nature to stay in one place for long. That's just, he already showed that. And one of the things that I found when I was, you know, I would see these comments, people like, I had this one woman say, we all agree that Dion needs to stay at the HBCU for another three years. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> What's about we all agree like this is a democracy? It's that man's choice. It's his choice to go wherever he wants to. And not to mention, he's already shown that he will leave and don't give a damn about who got issues with it. He's going where it's going to make him happy. And I respect that. But yeah, I didn't... I. No, I wouldn't say he needed to stay for however long. It wasn't in his nature to stay. I didn't expect him to stay for long at all. But I was still sad when he left. Uh, another comment down here. Is this man supposed to turn down the situation that you wouldn't? Okay. And I want to speak on that. Um, listen. When it comes to money... Yeah, and I'm not I'm not bragging on anything because I can't. You know, my my thing is this. I turn it down. I turn down a lot of money because there is a spiritual place and a spiritual uh undertaking that I'm getting to. That's me. That's not to say he's not on his own spiritual journey. He's doing what he was put here to do. I'm doing what I was put here to do. I don't ask anybody to walk my plight. That's why it's not in me to be talking to my, he should have stayed. He could like, I don't, I don't care to hear people saying he didn't need the money or he could afford this. You're in somebody's pockets. That's not your right to be in his pockets talking about what he needs. I don't agree with that. Okay. So, but for me, when I speak about, listen, y'all, y'all, <laughs> I, if it was if it was me 
to get funds from somebody, I can do that. I I literally in my nation, there are people come, Deep, I can pay you to do this. I pay no, because the energy on that project is not right. Because the energy is not right. You can't pay me enough money to do business with you because the energy is not right. And that's me. I don't I don't ask nobody else to do that. Okay. So I'm not saying, you know, yeah, if you had the $4 million, would you have turned it down? If the energy is not right, I'll turn it down without hesitation. That's just me. Okay. Now, last comment, and then we're going to go into seeing if anybody wants to come on and talk to Diva. Anybody wants to speak? Because I want to hear you. Let's have this conversation in love. All right. Um, last question, uh, ma'am, they didn't want to pay the man. All right. It says he made nothing and I'm glad he did what he did. And then it says they couldn't pay him. So one says they didn't want to pay him. And the other one says they couldn't pay him. So let me, once again, going back to this mindset, the mindset of the president, what's the mindset? All right, because one, this one down here is saying they couldn't. The other one up here saying they didn't want to. And I'm suggesting to you that, again, both of these deal with a mindset. So if we're talking about up here that they didn't want to pay him, then what's your mindset? Why would you let this man get up out of here like that? Why didn't you want to pay him when you know he's bringing in all of these funds? What is your mindset? It's not, it ain't high, highly vibratory because if you wanted him to stay, then first of all, make him an offer. Do something to let him know we really want you to stay. And this one says he couldn't. They couldn't pay him. Well, that's again, mindset. Because if you believe you can't, then you can't. Again, I'm going to say this again, over here, these people are like, uh, we don't have the money yet, but we're going to get it. Over here, these people are like, we ain't going to never get it. He ain't going to want us. I'm going to give you all this saying, and it's very important that we recognize the power of this saying. The child that believes they cannot and the child that believes they can are both right. The child that believes they can't and the child that believes they can are both right. Going back to mindset. What is your mindset? What do you believe? Because as soon as you start believing that you can, you're right. As soon as you believe that you can, you are right. Again, all of these dimensions open up for you to help you find your way through that path. The, if you believe you can, then you're right. What you want to be right about? You want to be right about how you can't or you want to be right about how you can? Which one you want? It's your choice. All right. So with that, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to open up this floor before I get out of here and go into my UNA university. Y'all students load up into the UNA university or get ready to, I know we early. Um, let me make sure I've said everything I need to say, uh, before I get out of here, but I, I'm going to say this cause I want y'all to know, I love you. I appreciate you. All of you all, even in your disagreement have been very respectful and you can't ask for no more than that. We all not going to agree on everything, but when we can do it with respect and love, we're going to build, we're going to build. we are building. That's where we're, we're moving, uh, towards a higher uh, plane right now. As a matter of fact, I need y'all to understand, uh, especially melanated folk, your powers are coming back into alignment. All right. You are going to gain the riches. You're going to gain uh, the power that we used to have that is coming back online. And personally, I was loving what Dion was doing because it was ushering in this new period in this new era, but we're still going to get there. We are there and we're moving rapidly towards regaining all of our power. And we do that by maintaining love for each other. So I love y'all. I appreciate you. 
uh, your comments, your flowers, your gifts, um, and even your disagreements. I love you and thank you for doing it with respect. Y'all are great. Uh, with that being said, who want to talk to Diva? Who want to talk to Diva? Let me see. Um, okay, Barry's gone. Who, who wants to come in? Let me see. Somebody sent me a message. Who wants to come in? What uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through these questions. What the mind believe in the body will achieve. Yes, what the mind believes in the body will achieve it because uh, your body is your subconscious. Your subconscious is the one that does all of the building in your third dimension. All right. Thank you, Barry. Let's see. Best to know. Anubis. Thank you all for sharing the live rant, C1. Thank you so much. Uh, Platinum, Platinum, thank you. Uh, I was wishing you, wishing bad on Neon. I just think his new view will dump him when she's winning. Uh, <laughs> Barry thinks uh, Dion is going to get dumped if uh, Colorado starts winning. Let me say this to you about uh, Albion's and my Albion, because I love my Albion friends. I do. Uh, they, I have done business with them. I have performed for them. I have been friends with them. And one of the things about them, because people are like, it's not going to be the same. No, they'll treat you like the guy that you are. That's what they do. I was in South America, in Argentina, and... I couldn't have felt no more love. I, I wished I had got the love from my own people that I got when I went down there. I wished. Uh, not to say that, you know, Jackson State didn't give them a lot of love, but I'm going to tell you this. When I was watching the students, they was like, Dion, who? <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even know who it was. But anyway, you know, he deal with football. That didn't really have no impact on me. He didn't, deal with, he didn't do nothing for the uh, academia. So, uh D.I. Love going to be D.I. Love. So they, they weren't really, they was like, whatever, okay, great. But um, I'm telling you, they're going to treat him like the guy he is. That's what they do. And we're going to get into learning how to, you know, just show that much more love for the people who are here that are given to us. We're going to learn. You're going to learn today. All right. Um, what are you doing? Get it done more quickly. What you talking about, Wonder? Uh, Anubis says, wait, what happened? In the wise words of Dr. Hendri Hendricks Clark, you buried the man and continued the plan. I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, let's see. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Y'all want to come on with me? Anybody want to talk about this? Because this is a hot topic, and I normally don't do this. Uh, beautiful queen she's going to dump him when she gets too cute back to the kkk white guy <laughs> let me tell y'all something um i hope to bridge a gap uh between the colorado fans uh, this is what I, I i hope to see you know a gap between the colorado fans and even the jsu fans because what could happen is you know now uh coach prime could start inviting you know, Jackson State to do games with them. You know, maybe they can get more television publicity now by where he is. So, yeah, he is in a position, as was stated earlier, to do more for them or, you know, do more for them than he could being at the school. Maybe he'll invite them to, to play a game. And then he can pay them what he feels that they're worth. You never know. So, um what I don't want to do is that there be a division with Albion and the melanated people. I need y'all to understand something. Uh, there is a smaller group. And yeah, they might have light skin. Or you think they have light skin. But they're not the same people. These people, the melanated people, the uh, uh, Albions, they are puppets. 
The bottom line is that there's a smaller group that wants all of the resources and controls the resources. When somebody's voice gets too large, they've got to find a way to pull it away and control it. That's what I'm saying, and I still stand on that. Once again, y'all go watch the other video uh, that I did that's titled uh, Stop Selling Out for Money, and then you'll get a better understanding of that. All right. Do I have any questions? Is there anybody who wanted to come on? Uh, Willa, no money issues after that. What are you talking about, uh, hair health herbalist? Let's see. They need to get their trust at W4, all the corporations that took money from their estate. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hair health, health herbalist. I get it. So what the hair health herbalist is talking about is what we deal with in the UNA university. Um, when you are putting out funds, what we know by law is that whatever money you put out is supposed to come back to you 100% dollar for dollar. And when you are under trust and you learn these laws and how to get your funds back, then I don't care if you go to the grocery store and that grocery store receipt says $100, all right, then you can take that and you're supposed to get that back a dollar for dollar. And I'm not talking about no tax write-off. Well, you know, we can, you can write off a percentage of it. No, we're talking about 100% every penny, everyone that you get back. So when you start learning how to do that, then, uh, or when you come into the school, you start learning how to do that. And yeah, when they're writing off funds for the, 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 uh, airport, you know, when, when it, you know, where they're flying in this private jet or the, the buses, the transportation, the food, the, all of that, you get that back dollar for dollar when you know how to play the game. All right. Um, so nobody wants to come on with me? Y'all scared of diva? Hey, Gladys. The topic is, you know it's the hot topic. Gladys asked, what, what is the topic? The topic is about uh, Deion Sanders. And this is one of my rare, I've never done this before because of the simple fact that I don't like to do or deal with the reactions of the public because I, I deal with the spiritual side and the law and I, I stick to that. Uh, but this one became a hot topic because of the com the one of the sessions I did called Stop Selling Out for Money. And you all can go and view that. And people took issue with one of the clippings that said several. They took, it doesn't matter what side of the fence I was on, somebody's going to take issue. But that's okay. They did it with love. But uh, took issue on me saying um, that Jackson State took a chance on Dion. All right. And, and they did. And that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. But, yeah, there were issues there dealing with his uh, reputation was one. And then dealing with the, the fact that they didn't know he had the experience to do it. They didn't feel they weren't sure. Rather, there, uh, the other colleges uh, turned him down. They wouldn't let him in. They wouldn't let him be head coach. And he wanted it the way he wanted it. And then Jackson State said, OK, we'll take a shot. And so that's OK. Uh but my main point here, my main point here is love. That's one of my main points, love. That even if we're disagreeing on something, we do it in love. And then also to have compassion for those who are hurting. Um, not to be so, y'all, excited. Y'all knee jerking. Up. Huh, what you mean? Dion is great. Dion is the best. And Dion, okay, nobody said he wasn't. He's awesome. But let's be honest about uh, what went down and what's really happening. All right. Crucial says he sold out and people don't want to hold him accountable. Yeah, we talked about that, Crucial. Uh, I said he sold out. I'm not saying he is a sellout, but I'm saying in this instance, you have to call it what it is. They even said it when they took his contract. Oh, yeah, we, he sold his contract out and we bought him out. They said that. So go back and look at those videos. However, that doesn't mean that what he did was a bad thing. So once again, you're not going to hear me say it was a bad thing. It was a terrible thing. But it definitely was definitely was a sad thing. And yes, I do believe he loved those kids. I do believe that. 
All right. There's no way he could be a sellout. Okay. I'm I don't I'm not saying he's a sellout, but we got to be honest that there was like I said there was deception and there was him selling this dream uh to people and he would say no I don't I don't sell the dream no yes you do when you start talking about religion and you start uh bringing other kids from other schools and telling them hey I'm going to be here at the HBCU you're going to come in here and you can uh you're going to get all this attention from the NFL scouts you know I got all kind of contacts I can do this you're selling you got to sell to get a recruit there so let's just be honest and then when you leave at you know Let's you bring somebody in 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 a year, all right. So let's let's talk about if we want to just be specific about who he sold out to on who he sold out on the the students that came in that previous year through this portal that came in because you promised them this this and this, all right. They come in and you're saying, hey, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be your coach. I'm gonna be able to get your attention. I'm gonna be able to do all this, and then you leave after one year. Then you sold out. If not even us, just them. We were talking about them. That's not saying it was a good or bad thing. You did what you had to do. If you weren't happy there, they weren't giving you the backing that you needed, that's fine. Let's call it what it is. You sold out. That's okay. There's not no hate. There's not saying that's a part of your character. We're just saying that this is what it is. And yes, you were deceptive before you left because you got, first of all, Under Armour on the hook. Because they didn't know you was leaving. These kids that came in through this portal, they didn't know you were leaving. Your own son didn't know you were leaving. This is not hate. This is calling it what it is. Okay? So just remember that. Y'all love. I love. I love Deion Sanders. I'm still a fan. I'm watching Colorado. I'm watching Jackson State. I'm a fan of both now because of Deion. All right? But we're going to call it. We're going to call it spade a spade. All right. Randy, you want to come on? Can we get, let me see if I can get Randy on. He provided with right mechanisms behind them. They couldn't recruit any, anywhere. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand that, uh, Potoma. Help uh, rephrase it so I can uh, respond. The kids were five and four stars and they could have went anywhere, right? They could have gone anywhere, uh, but they came to him and they got that, they got that look, they got that look. Okay, so yeah, they did get some looks, but I'm just saying, if we're if we're gonna be honest, ain't nobody hating. Let's just be honest. But again, at the same time, I'm saying I recognize and respect both sides. I respect the people who love Deion Sanders and the fans. I'm a fan. I also respect those who are disappointed and feel that he sold out because that's what he did. And he was deceptive. But that's part of the game. Is that a part of his character? I'm not saying that's a part of his character. I'm just saying call it what it is. Uh, who, let me see. How do I call somebody? Let me see if I can. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can pull you on, Randall. I don't really know how to do that. Now, I told you I'm a newbie. If you want to come on, send me a message. Let me see if I can get you on. Y'all be respectful, but I don't even have to say that because I know the people who are watching this, this session, they are all respectful because everybody here shows love. Uh, he put Jackson on the map. Yes, he did. He, prov he provided or proved with investment in the program they could achieve success. Yes, yes, he did. He did all of that. Nobody's denying that. And I don't think anybody, who, even the people who are hating can deny that. I, I've seen a lot of people hate, but nobody can deny what he did. Nobody. Now, uh, even when we're going back to Coach Robinson, when he was saying, he ain't sweat, I'm sweat. He ain't sweat, I'm sweat. Let me say something. When you're talking about people who are, um, you know, who stay with a program for their entirety, I don't agree with that. Like, I don't disagree with just uh, staying your whole career with somebody uh, just because you feel like you're loyal. I, they don't, they're not going to be loyal to you. You stop performing, they're going to kick you out the door. So I don't blame Dion for going on to what he felt is greener pastures. I'm not saying I blame him for that. I said, today, we are keeping it 100 on both sides. How are you going to put your phone number up here? <laughs> uh, I can't call you on this phone. 
So what I want you to do is I'm trying to connect with you on here. How do we bring how do we bring a guest on? Hold on. How do we bring a guest on anybody? Uh Grandpa Gum Gumbo, Willie Robinson. Willie Robinson, you want to come on? If you're watching, say yes and I'll bring you on. Cause I don't know how to, I can't call you from the phone right now. Oh, send a video request. How do I send a video request? Pot Potoma says, when you're successful, you will always draw admirers and haters alike. I totally agree, Potoma. I'm not a hater. I just want to make that clear. Uh, how do I invite him on? You got to give me instructions. I told you I'm a newbie at this game. Um, all right. Who? who uh, I don't know how to do this. Send me a message if you want to come on. I think you can send me a uh, an invite, uh, and then I can bring you on. All right, so rather I would we would have to talk afterwards because I can't call you right now on the session. I was saying who wants to come on the session and uh speak with me right now. I don't know how to invite you, so you're gonna have to send an invite to me. And then I can bring you on. All right. So now I'm about to get out of here because I've been trying to I can't call you on the phone because I'm on the phone. All right. So um, he made room for the next coach to step up. Yes, he did, Eric. Thank you for that. Uh, click the boxes on the bottom next to coach to step up. What? Click, <laughs> click the bottom on the bottom right. All right. I'm going to get out of here because I don't know how to do this. So I had to figure that out. All right, so now, um, at any rate, I want to say thank you guys. I can't thank you enough, you know. Yes, thank you, Coach Prime, but I'm thanking you all because y'all, you know, when I talk about my universe or the spirits around me, that's y'all. Y'all are spirits with vessels. And I appreciate your beauty because you are my reflection. And I mean that. I'm not just saying that. When I look through the comments and, you know, people are disagreeing. That doesn't upset me. As a matter of fact, the way you disagree, you do it with love and respect. And that makes me feel beautiful because y'all are beautiful. All right. Y'all are my reflection. And I thank you for um, being such a beautiful reflection. And I'm going to say this again. We want to have love for each other because the more of that we have, the more we're going to build, the more we're going to grow and then have compassion. All right. Even in the face of those who are hurting, recognize why they're hurting and then help them to move forward, help them to move forward with love. All right. Y'all got to show gratitude because nobody can say that Deion Sanders didn't leave behind a, a, a wonderful legacy. Nobody can say he didn't leave behind a hope and money and resources. He let, he did a lot. So we got to show appreciation for that. And uh, yes, crucial. I, I feel you. I'm, I feel the same way. I'm proud and disappointed at the same time. Uh, I, on the inside, I was crying. But on the outside, what I have to recognize is that Dion has to do what's best for him. And we got to respect and love him for it. All right. All right, peoples. I'm going to get up out of here since I can't figure out how to work this. I'm still a newbie. I'm going to figure it out one day. And next time, I want to talk to you. I want to hear from you. All right. I'm yours truly, Diva Larie, and uh, I want y'all to know tomorrow we got a session. It's going to be a federal court. I want y'all to be there with us uh, to see this because we bring in the law, baby. We bring in the law. United Nations from America Federal Court. I'm yours truly, Diva Larie, for the UNA Republic and UNA University. If you want to join, all right, be ready to click the link. And come on and join us. We start in January 15th. Diva Lurie, I'm yours truly. Out. Bye.